Touch me now. I need you. Touch me now. Good morning. Holy Spirit, fall fresh on me. I need you. Touch me now. Good morning, Sister Alicia. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Good morning, Chastity. Good morning, Sister Fox. It's a great morning. It's a great morning to be in Jesus, to be coming into 2018. Fall fresh, Lord. We need you to touch us now this Saturday morning. Glory to God for this time of teaching. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Neil. Good morning, my dear friend Brandy. I miss you so much. Am I Hallelujah. We are at the hour of 8 30. I'm going to wait one minute. I'm kind of weird. So it's 8 30, so I want that clock to be at 8. 31 so we're headed on the up right we're not straight down we're on our way up Amen. and it is so well we welcome the lord this morning this is a wonderful time to be saved you guys just continue to pray as i am teaching this just cover this word good morning brother hubbard just continue to cover this word because for some reason, every time I get ready to start teaching, my internet connection grows weak. And that's very strange because during the day, it doesn't do it. And who's up at this time of the morning for stuff to be bouncing loose? So uh, just stay in prayer with me as we go through this word. My plan is to only keep you here about 35 minutes. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word changes lives. We thank you that it is your word that sets us free. Thank you for being the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Thank you that you are a mighty, mighty God. Thank you for your love today. Thank you for your keeping power today. We need you to touch us now. There's so many things that your sons and your daughters are, are in the midst of and being challenged with. And we need you to touch us now. Good morning, Sister Evangelist Karen and Sister Yolanda, Sister Williams. God bless you all. I thank you all for joining us. I know that many of us are in the midst of a place in our lives that we need closure. And we're saying, I'm not taking this in to 2018. Good morning, Sister Tracy. Listen, I know, I hear you because I've said it. That thing right there is not going with me. I give up this so that I can receive that which God has for me. And so I am coming in agreement with you this morning that you are going to find closure for the things that you need, whether it's answers, whether it's problems, whether it's promotion. What is it that I'm to do? You have questions. You have questions. And you are saying, what is it, God, that you would have for me to do? Listen, it is not a sin, and nor is it a weak faith for you to ask God a question. It's not. Jesus asked God questions. Lord, if it's possible, take this from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, where are you? Listen, God ain't tripping on you asking questions. I need y'all to get that in y'all spirit. God is not tripping on you asking questions. It is the motive behind your question. The motive behind your question, because you're asking because you think you know better than God. Or are you asking because you genuinely want to hear from God? Because you genuinely need an answer from God? Because you genuinely want to make sure that the decision you're about to make with the choices you've been given is the one that God has for you to make? Because he is the lamp unto your feet and the light unto my path. Did I say amen at the end of that prayer? Just amen. We went right on in to hearing what the Lord was saying. I want us to turn to 1 Kings chapter 13. It's a blessed scripture, and all scripture is blessed. Uh, it's given unto us for the edifying of the body, for correction, for rebuking, for training in righteousness. 
But turn to 1 Kings chapter 13. This really blessed me as I was reading this and starting to meditate and study the word of God. And know that any question you have, I'm telling you, I tell people all the time, there is a word for everything that you're dealing with. There is a scripture. You ain't got to go find a scripture. You ain't got to go, you know, woosah, woosah to get a scripture. You ain't got to just flip the book open and put your finger somewhere to find out what is the Lord saying. There is a scripture for you. You just say, God, what is it that you need for me to know? Please share Please tag someone. Please invite someone to be a part of this. You know you have friends who are struggling. What is it that I'm to do? How do I close this season out? How do I close this year out? You know there are people in your family, friend girls, brothers. Listen, closure is something that typically women seek. Women seek closure. A lot of times men don't seek closure. They're not saying, you know, heal my heart before I go into the next thing. Let me not take this into the next relationship. You know, men just tend to move on because they're conquerors. God made them that way. Because seeking closure is an emotional uh, mindset. It, it is something that says, I need to close this door before I go to that door. Just, I don't want all these doors open. And so this is why you got stalker girlfriends men of God, because you did not close that door. You left it open. And because women by nature are tend to be more of a uh, S personality type that wants security, that says I need security, I need understanding, I need to know where I'm at, uh, that isn't necessarily something that most men pursue. We pursue that. And because of that, we need to know where we are. And when we know where we are, that thing over there gets shut. Because I got what I want. I know where we roll into because you made it clear. So I don't need all of that. God didn't even make us that way. Then, but men, little black books, right? So, you know, a spare and a pair. You know, thank you, God, that you delivered me because that's how I used to think in college. Don't nobody take sand to the beach. Why are you tripping? So a spare and a pair. But we're not, we not doing that. We saved because those Galatians 4, back to our first teaching, those who did not know God were held captive to the ways that they used to think, were held captive to the sins and the ways of their past. But now that you know God, or better yet, that you are known by God, we will not go back to those weak and miserable ways. Amen. Good morning, Yamika. Hello. Uh, hello, Brother uh, Matthew. Uh, uh, hallelujah. I love God this morning. He's wonderful. Sister Lisa, Sister Cheryl, Sister Tracy, both Tracy. Hallelujah. So... Closure is something that typically women seek after, but I am encouraging the men of God who are listening and will listen. Get closure. Establish closure in your life so you don't have all them swinging doors so that you can be committed to a thing and focused on a thing. And I know when it comes to your money and your job, you are real focused, right? But when it comes to relational things, sometimes you lay that to the side. Closure is important. Closure is important, and we must seek closure so that we can have the things that God has for us, so we don't have things lingering out there that have no purpose and aren't attached to anything. You've seen a tree, a tree where there's fruit on it that is no longer attached to the vine. I'm already preaching. Something that's no longer attached to the vine, and it's withered, and it's brown, and it's ugly. And we know, we know that if there is a fruit, a grape in our bag that's not attached to that vine and it's all withered and ugly looking and smushy, I'm going to tell you, before I even get to the aisle to weigh it, to pay for it, I didn't took that out the bag because I don't even want that in my cost. Come on, somebody. I don't even want to pay for nothing that's withered up, dry, mushy. I'm going to keep that with the with the good thing? No, 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 no. I pull that out. I pull that out the batch. I do it with my strawberries. I will lift up the top. I'll look under the bottom, and I'll pull those strawberries out that aren't any good. It is important that you have closure, that you close the things and pull away the things that do not benefit you anything. And in this season, you have questions. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I leave my job? Should I transition to another job? Should I be looking for? Yes. If, if it's coming up in your spirit and you can't shake it, 
I'm here to tell you, I'm here to tell you that you are to pursue that. And if nothing else, you are to seek God. If that thing in your life that you need to about bring closure to is affecting relationships, is affecting uh, uh, the time that you're spending with your spouse, with your children, not only quantity of time, but quality of time. If it's, if it's dealing with, you, you can't go to church, and I'm like, should I do this, should I do that? God needs for you to be clear. And when I'm talking about closure, I'm not just talking about relationship closure. I'm talking about situational and life closure. Good morning, Brother Nate. Good morning, uh, uh, Devin. Good morning. Good morning. And so this is every area of your life before the clock strikes midnight on December 31st. You need closure. You need to be confident of these things. You need to be assured of some things. Good morning, Sister Pamela. Hello, hello, Florence. And so God needs for you to be clear before you venture in so you can have a clear mind, so you can be focused, so you can be focused on what it is you are to do. I'm no longer, I'm wavering between opinions. I'm no longer tossed to and fro because I'm clear, I'm clear. And I'm telling you, God can bring you a quick answer. He can bring you a quick answer. But this I do know, once you find closure, you cannot go back. You cannot waver. You cannot be tossed to and fro. You can't be, this was, did I make the right decision? Oh my God, let me tell you something. The very fact that you're asking God, what's his will? And what is it that you are to do? Means that you're already in his will. That's good news to somebody. The very fact that you are asking God, what is your will? What is it that I am to do? You are already in his will, and he is ready to answer you. First Kings chapter 13, starting in verse 8. And the word of the Lord says, but the man of God, this was a prophet, the prophet, the man of God to give me. Now, this is the prophet uh, talking to, uh, this is David uh, talking to the king. This is David talking to the king. I just got my head all crooked here. This is David talking to the king. He says, listen, if you give me half your house, if you give me the profit share, he said, I'm still not going to go with you. He said, I will not go with you. He said, I'm not going to do that. Go on, keep reading. He says in verse, uh, he keeps on, he says, I will not go with you, nor will I eat the bread, nor drink the water in this place. For if, for so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, you shall not eat bread, nor shall you drink water, nor shall you return by the way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way that he came. Hear me. When God has delivered you, when God has set you free, it is important that you not go back to the way that you came. First Kings chapter 13, somebody uh, post that for me. First Kings chapter 13, verses eight through 10. Do not go back. He said, I won't go back the way that I came. He said, I'm not going to do that. Listen, even the Magi, when they came to see Jesus, the Bible says that they did not go back the way that they came. They didn't go back the same way that they came. They went on. Now, this is what I know and this is what I believe. Because you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm looking at my notes here. God woke me up about 430 with what I was to share. So uh, he gave me some notes. Because you have Jesus Christ in you, and because the hope of glory is in you, because the Holy Spirit is in you, who is your guide, who comes to lead you into all truth, you do not have to go back, as Galatians told us the other day, to weak and miserable ways. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go back because you have leaned on your staff, because you have leaned on something that you are dependent on and that has enabled you. God is in you. All power is in you. He said, I give you the same power. 
to tread up on serpents, to be free, to have the breakthrough. You do not have to go back that you have to be dependent upon anything or anyone or be uncertain in your life. You have the Holy Spirit in you who comes to lead you into all truth. He will bring you understandings that you have not because you ask not. That's just not material things, beloved. Beloved. No, 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 no. You have not. You have not because you ask not. You have not the truth of what you need because you haven't been clear with God. God, this is what I need by, by then. Now, listen, let me help you with something. The bot, you can put a demand on heaven because you are a Christian and you have a personal relationship with God, not just because your name is written, but because you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You can put a demand on heaven. You can ask God for some things, remember? Or maybe you don't. I taught a lesson, uh, ask God for a sign. You can ask God for a sign. You can ask him. Which and you can, He said, put me in remembrance of my word. He said, do that. Put a demand on me. What, what is it that you need? What do you need, Sister Tuesday? What do you need, Sister Yolanda? What do you need, Sister Pam? What do you need? What do you need, Florence? What do you need? What do you need, Matthew? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need me to do? What do you need an answer about? Am I to go this way? Am I to go that way? Am, is it him or is it her? You know, I said the other day, we're going to switch this thing. I know it's wax on, wax off, but I'm telling you it's wax off, wax on. Wax off, wax on. Good God Almighty. You need to take some stuff off so you can put the right things on. Good God Almighty. But because you have God in you and because you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have the power to close things. You have the power to shut things so that the little foxes cannot get in or the big foxes. You can seal stuff. You can bless your threshold. Hallelujah and your doorposts, that things cannot come in anymore. You will not trespass here anymore, devil. You will not get into my family anymore. You will not get into my marriage anymore. You will not have my children anymore. You will not keep uh, tampering with my health and my money and my job and my church. Good God Almighty, you got to draw the line in the sand. You got to put some closure to some things. Remember I told you, closure ain't just about relationships. You got to draw the line in the sand on some stuff. So because you have Jesus, because you have Jesus, you can, and he commands us not to go back. Matter of fact, he, tell, he tells us don't even look back, let alone don't reflect back, don't be thinking back. He said, old things have passed away. Behold, you are new. Remember Lot's wife? Remember his wife? She looked back and God turned her into a pill of salt. Don't be looking back to stuff that don't, that don't mean you no good. Children of Israel, y'all want to go back to oppression and slavery and prison? You want to go back to Egypt? You want that over, over provision and purpose and Elohim? You want Egypt over Elohim, really? You want poverty and imprisonment over provision and purpose, really? Because you want to go back. The scripture tells us in 1 Kings chapter 13, David said, I'm not going back. God has instructed me. I will not go back and I will not go back even the way that I came. I know you're saying, I've never been this way before and I don't even quite know how I got here. So since I don't know how I got here, I'm going to say it. How in the hell I said it? Am I going to know how to get to where God wants me to get to? How do I, how, how do I start over? So we think we're going to trace back. <laughs> And go the way that we came to get back and to get to what God has for us. No, God will tell you which way to go. The Bible says that behind you, you will hear a voice. Well, that makes me happy. Behind here, behind you, you will hear a voice that tells you which way to go. That voice is the Holy Spirit. Ask him. Again, he is the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your pathway. You need to start accessing closure in this season. God, what is it that you would have for me to do? What is it that you would have for me to do? What do you want me to do, Jesus? And he will speak. And he will speak pronouncely. 
What remember, I just said the Magi, they didn't even go back the way that they came. And because of this relationship, they had encountered Jesus, though he was a baby, two, three years old, in, in that manger. They had encountered Jesus. And then they got a warning. Uh, if you go back and read, I believe it's in Matthew 2, a, a warning from the angel. So they had this encounter from with Jesus, and they experienced the presence of God. They experienced the Holy Spirit. And because of this encounter with Jesus, they did not go back the way that they came. Now, if you remember, Herod had a relationship with them, such a relationship that he could call them into his quarters and instruct them to go find this this king of the Jews, and they went on their way. Herod was expecting them to come back to him with an answer. But because of their encounter, hear me, beloved, because of the encounter that you have had with God, because not only do you know God, God knows you, you don't have to go back the way that you came, that you've been free from. You don't have to go back and do the things that you used to do. You don't need that sugar daddy. You don't need him. You don't need that man. You, I know, I know, I just, I'm lonely. I just want to be comforted. I just want somebody to lay next to. I know, I know. But if you wait on God, if you wait on God, y'all know, I've been waiting. You wait on God. I just believe God is going to give you something bigger, better, greater than what you could ever dream or imagine. Y'all need to share this. Y'all need to tag this. Y'all need to invite somebody. God will give you what you need. I believe that as sure as I'm sitting here. He will bring you comfort. He will bring you peace. And until then, and with that, I'll say it like that, he will also bring purpose. So you don't have to feel like, oh my God, when, when is my turn? This person got married, got engaged over Christmas and this person uh, got married and we pray it's blessed, right? I'm sorry, y'all. My hair is really getting on my nerves. We pray it's blessed and I'm going to declare it's going to be blessed, but you don't know. You don't know. Wait your turn. Wait your turn. It's coming. You do not have to go back the way that you came. You don't. And David said, I will not. I will not. I have been commanded, and so have you, to not go back to weak and miserable ways. Because when you didn't know God, you didn't know no better. You didn't know no better. But now that you know God, you, you have better in you. Good God Almighty. You got better in you. You got better in you. And because you've had this encounter with, with God himself, I want to challenge you, don't double back to your old life. That's a tweetable. Don't double back. Somebody post that, boy. Don't double back to your old life, to your old ways, to old relationships, to old habits. Don't double back. Don't double back. Don't double back. God has set you free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Don't re-entangle yourself in those things, in confusion, in doubt, in worry, in unbelief. Yes, in relationships. Yes, in chasing, you know, the, the dollars. Whatever it was that you have been free from, delivered from, or have asked God to free you from or to deliver you from, don't double back. Don't go back. How many of you have ever gotten lost on the road? You're traveling and you've gotten lost. And the longer you stay on that road called lost, good God almighty, as long as you stay on that road called lost because you're lonely, because you've lost the ability to be optimistic, because you will not submit, because you will not trust, lost, L-O-S-T, you stay on that road of lost. And the longer you stay there, I, I, I'll just talk for me. I've been lost traveling. I, I used to do so much traveling when I was in corporate America. And, and after a while, you start feeling crazy. You're like, now, didn't I just pass that? <laughs> didn't I just pass that? Am I lost? And you're like, how did I get lost? Then you feel a little, little stupid, maybe. Like, now, how did I get lost? How did that happen? And then you get frustrated. And then the longer you stay on it, you get tired. And if you stay on the road called lost too long, you stay on there too long, you get scared. 
Don't let it be getting dark. Don't let the sun start going down. Now you're a little scared because you're out here by yourself because you, you didn't went your way. You took a turn that either unbeknownst to you, you weren't supposed to take. You got tricked. You got fooled. You got bamboozled. You got led astray. You got to run them up. Wrong person, wrong job. Wrong move, career move. You didn't pick up and move somewhere because somebody told you that's where you need to go. I remember when everybody was moving to Atlanta and and research triangle, research triangle, and and Carolinas. Everybody was going. I got on the bus too because I thought I was supposed to go. Thank you, Jesus. He put a halt. Was like, nah, you ain't supposed to go there. I had a job lined up with a crazy salary. O M G. But God said no, but I was I was a part of the push, like the gold rush. Everybody just going. And you got on the road. You got deterred. You didn't realize you were being deterred. And now you, you caught up in the swing of it, and you're there. And now you're afraid because you realize, I wasn't supposed to do this. Maybe I didn't pray long enough. Maybe I didn't ask God. Maybe I didn't fast. Maybe I got... I got drawn away because of the, the price tag. Maybe I got drawn away because of the 42-inch stretch uh, chest or the salt and pepper hair. Maybe I got drawn away because of the 36, 24, 36. Maybe I got drawn away. And I got on the road called Lost. And I haven't been able to get back to where God has for me to be. But God wants you to know today, you can get back on the road called Found. Hallelujah. You can get back on the road call found. You just got to close out that season and be obedient. Line yourself up so that you can be obedient and do what God tells you to do. The next time it's time for you to make a move. We get scared when we get lost. We just want to get off that road. And sometimes we'll take another road that we ain't supposed to be on. We're not supposed to be on that road either. But we'll take it just to get off this road, this road of confusion and frustration and fear and anger and feeling crazy, feeling like, am I, is this marriage ever going to get right? Are these people at this job ever going to do right? Am I ever going to get the promotion? Am I ever going to get out of here? Are they ever going to do right by me? Is he or she ever going to do right by me? My kids, is my health ever going? But you have to resolve. Resolve right now. Before 20, excuse me, before 2018 comes in, I'm closing that. I'm going to trust God and I'm going to give it to God. And I'm going to be like David in 1 Kings chapter 13. No, I'm going to obey God. God said, don't go back that way. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to believe his word. I'm going to take this off so I can put this on. So how do we find closure? Let me just run through this. How do we find closure? Now, I told y'all for the last couple of days to bring the thing that you know you need to bury. You know you need to let go of. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. You need to have your personal committal service. Write down everything you need to let go. Write it down. Go find you a basket. I know it's cold outside. Go find you something. Put it in the sink. I don't know. Light a match to it and let it burn. I literally mean that. I am very visual in, in what I do, what God calls me to do in the spirit. And I absolutely believe in symbolically. Don't set your house on fire. But put it in the sink. I don't care. Get Deal with it, right? Deal with it. And get rid of that stuff and symbolically bury it. Symbolically kill it. Symbolically destroy it. I will not live a life of fear. I will not live a life of bondage. I will not live a life of oppression. I to the spirit of poverty and lack. I will not be afraid of failure, nor will I be afraid of success. You have to kill that stuff because then every time the enemy tries to take you back, you'll be like, wait a minute. And certainly if it's burnt, you can't get it together. How do you find closure? You got to take off so you can put on. Lay aside. The Bible says in, in uh, Proverbs, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Since you are surrounded with such great clouds of witnesses, let us throw off, let us lay aside everything that hinders you and the sins that so 
easily entangles you. Throw it off. Now, there, one translation says lay it aside. Now, that sounds real cute, you know. So I got this sweater. This is my faithful sweater I've had for years. So it's one thing. It's got holes in it. So one thing, it's one thing. I love this sweater. It's so warm. So it's one thing to lay something aside. Wasn't that cute? But it's a whole nother thing to throw. Y'all got to learn how to throw some stuff. Throw that thing. Throw that thing off of you. Y'all trying to lay it down and be cute? No, it ain't no mink, boo. Throw that thing down. It don't mean you no good. Throw it down. So that translation says, throw off everything that is hindering you from walking in your victory, from walking in your purpose, from living out destiny. Throw it down. Throw it down. I know I told you uh, 35 minutes. I got five more minutes, but I might need 10. But we're going to close her out. Throw it down. He said, throw it down. And then run. So when you take it off, you're free. That weight has been lifted. The weight has been lifted. Now you can run. Now you can run into the purpose and the destiny that God has for you. Get to running. Lay it down. Throw it off and go. Ephesians tells you to put it away. Put it away. Put it out of your mind. Take it out of your mind. Think of it whenever that thought comes back to you. Start thinking upon things that are holy, things that are lovely, things that are true, things that are from above, things that have a good report. That's the stuff you got to start thinking about, beloved. You can't let yourself become entangled and entrapped in these things. I preach it to myself. I love Jesus today. I believe I like to be the first partaker of the word. Good God Almighty. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you to read 22 through 32. Actually, it's just a, a great passage of just living life victoriously and, and letting things go. He said, you, you who were taught, you are being taught today. You have been taught by your pastor, by your Sunday school teacher, by the Holy Spirit. You who have been taught with regards to the former way of life, you have been taught. Matter of fact, you lived it. You lived the former way of life. So by now, you should have some knowledge that you've applied, which now becomes wisdom. He said to put off, to put away your old man, which is being corrupted by its sinful desires to be made new in the attitude of your mind. You got to start thinking differently, beloved. You got to think differently about whatever it is, whether it's your debt, whether it's your job, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your singleness, whether it's when I'm going to be married, whether it's your healing, whether it's your children, whether it's your finance, you got to think differently. Man, am I going to ever get out of debt? Yep, because one day I'm going to owe nobody nothing but love. You got to think differently. Man, is my marriage ever going to get right? Is she ever going to act right? Well, yeah, because I'm going to declare favor over my life. And he who finds a wife found favor. So she might not be acting right, but I declare favor is over my life. So she's going to come on in. Man, is he ever going to get it together? No, yep, yep. I think differently because, because he loves me as Christ loved the church. I know it don't look like it. I know it don't feel like it. God said he will bring your children back from the north and from the south. I know they're wayward. But did you train them up in the way that they should go? So when they were old, they won't depart. Somewhere between training them up and getting old, they bumped their head. You know why we know? Because we did too. But he says, when your obedience has become complete, you can bring everything that is in disobedience into obedience. Check our lives. We got to check our lives. We checking our kids and everybody else around us that's out of order, including your spouse. But are you right? Are you being obedient? This ain't about being perfect. But are you willing to be held accountable for where you are? And if you are, you can call some things into order. How do we bring closure? We lay aside, we put off, we take off. We run to God. We run into the presence of God. We get rid of James 1, chapter, uh, James 1, verses 21 through 22, tells us to get rid of those things. Get rid of those ways of how you used to think and how you used to act. Just get rid of it. So we're putting away, we're, take, we're taking off, we're getting rid of, we're putting it away, we're getting rid of it. We're putting it away, however and whatever that looks like. 
and we are not going back. We are not going to look back. We are not going to go back. We are going to do the word. We are not going to just be hearers of the word. We are going to be doers of the word. So once you do all of that, you take off and put on Jesus Christ. Really, that's really what it's all about. You take off, you lay it aside, take it off, throw it off, whatever words you want to use, put it away, burn it up, bury it, do whatever you need to do. But all of this taking a circular path around the same area continuously is not only inconvenient and a waste of time, but it's crazy. To keep doing the same thing over and over again and not closing that thing out, we are going to finish 2012 strong. Do you hear me? 2017 strong. We are going to finish strong so we can go into 2018 ready for a new thing. God wants to do a new thing. He wants to birth something out of you. Purpose, destiny. He wants to push you and propel you to where he has you to go and what he has for you to do. There's somebody waiting on you. Yeah, thank you for receiving me on a Saturday morning and listening to my teaching. And I thank God for a little anointing and, and, and a little study uh, diligence and, and things like that. And, and I hear from God. I thank him for all of my gifts. I thank him for my purpose. I thank him for who he is. But there is someone waiting on you. Whether it's one person, 100 people, 1,000 people, 10,000 people. There's somebody waiting on you. And we must finish out this year strong. We must, we must not go back to weak and miserable ways. We got to let things go. We got to find closure. And so we're going to come together again tomorrow, see what the Lord says. I think I know where he wants me to go in scripture. Well, at least in topic, I'm not sure what scripture, but we're going to come tomorrow. Enough of this Marbury Bush ministry. Have you ever seen a Marbury Bush? A Marbury Bush is about this big. It's about this big. And the song says, here we go round the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Here we go round the mulberry bush all the day long. Really? One, it's small. <laughs> it's small. The mulberry bush is small. What, what, what? You're just going around and around. Just re-going. Just keep going around. No, I'm not going to keep going around with you. I'm not going to keep arguing with you. That's what you need to tell somebody. I'm done with that argument. Either get it together or get to stepping. Get to counseling. Get to Jesus. Get to prayer. Get to fasting. You need to tell yourself that too. Self, I'm not going to keep going around and around with you. You are going to obey God. This flesh is going to obey God. This mind is going to obey God. This mouth is going to obey God. My soul is going to bless the Lord. Body, you're going to get up and go to church. Not just because it's the new year. But when I find myself in February, in March, in April, in May, in June, July, August, September, all the way back into 2018, I'm going to have my tail in somebody's house. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be worshiping. Money, you're going to get it together. You need to start speaking to this stuff. Money, you're going to get it together. Finances, because I'm going to be obedient and bring my tithe into the storehouse. I'm going to give my offering. I'm going to pay my bills. Good God Almighty, somebody just stretched their hand this way. I need a miracle with these student loans. Real talk. So let's all be in agreement because we declared about a month ago we was going to get some breakthrough on these student loans. Not just for me, but for you. So, so let's just, hey, speak to that thing. Money, you're going to do what you're supposed to do. Because I know when I bring my tithe into the storehouse, the Bible says into church that there is meat. There is there what the church needs, has. But God, you promised you'll rebuke the devourer for my sake. You're going to get the enemy. And the enemy and everything that he's coming after me to try to confuse me and entangle me with. Yes, he will. So you must get to this place of closure. Closure in your heart in your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, your will, your spirit. You got to decide, I'm going to close this thing out and I'm going to close 2017 out strong. And then I'm going to make a plan for 2018. Maybe I, I think that's what God wants us to do tomorrow. I'm going to make a plan for 2018. And one of the things at the top of my list is that I will not go back to weak and miserable ways. Galatians chapter four. I won't go back. I'm not going to lean on things where I have been dependent upon that have enabled me that are not healthy for me, that God has told me to throw it down. Remember Moses yesterday? 
throw that thing down. And you're holding things in your hand. You don't even know what you're holding. Sometimes we're holding things that are treasures, but sometimes we're holding things that are trite and curses. And you got to throw them down and not pick them back up. And then today, 1 Kings chapter 13, the man of God, David said, mm -mm, I'm not going to mess with God. God told me don't go back that way. I'm not going that way. I'm going to be like the man. I don't care what relationship I had back here. God had told me don't go back there. I'm not going back there. I'm not going back there. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. And, and God is going to take care of me up there. I'm going to let that go back there and God is going to take care of me up there. He has a better love for you. And let me say this. Sometimes it's not a better love. It's, it's, a, it's an equal love. I, I, even now I'm hearing in my spirit, there are people who have lost a spouse and you desire marriage again. You desire love again, but you haven't been able to bring closure. It's been three years, five years, eight years, 10 years and you haven't been able to find closure, I understand you still love your spouse. That is transition into glory. But God has love for you again. He wants you to live again. He does. And he will, he will send you or allow you to find a love that is equal to that and better. And that is not a mischaracterization of or dishonoring of your spouse who has transitioned. They loved you, you love them, they want you to be happy. They want you to find love again. They want you to do life and to live life and experience life with someone again. They may not look like him or her, they may not talk like him or her, they may not have the education as him or her, they may not have the, the, the drive as him as her, or they might have more drive. They may not dress like them, they may not, they may be different in some ways, but maybe that difference is what God is calling for in your life in this season. Because for the season that they were there with you, they were able to be a blessing to you to help you get to where you got before they transitioned and even right now, even right now. So even in that, God wants you to find peace in that place of closure to say, I'm going to live again. God has something great for me and you may feel like saying better dishonors them so let's just say god has something great for me god has a great healthy good love for me and it's okay to love again but in that area find closure find closure it doesn't dishonor them or their memory or your children if you guys had children to love again and to have a relationship again it doesn't but in the things of your life, whether it's ministry, whether it's business, whether it's finances, whether it's health, find closure. Cancer is not going to come back in Jesus' name. That book is closed, Pamela. I'm so glad you're on here, Pamela, because yesterday, good God Almighty, rarely does the Holy Spirit bring back a prophetic word. But yesterday, the Holy Spirit, was it yesterday? Whenever. The Holy Spirit said to tell you to go back to school, to finish your degree. Now, I don't know if this is another degree. I feel like it's a degree. Like, yeah. He said to tell you to go back and finish school. Go back and get your degree. He said 2018 is going to be exceptional for you. Now, this is what I tell people about the prophetic. If something is spoken that you agree with, you need to grab that for yourself. But God said this is going to be an exceptional year for you. And so I come in agreement with you that you are not going back the way you came. Cancer is not coming back. So we, we shut that road. We seal that road. We're going we gonna to call this, um, you know, like one of them hurricanes that came through Mexico and, and just tore up the roads. So even if you wanted, if, if it wanted to come back, we're declaring it's not coming back down this road. And it's not going to come back a different road in the name of Jesus. All paths that lead to cancer have been closed in Jesus' name. The blood is up over it in Jesus' name. Now, any of y'all ever been diagnosed, I need y'all to grab that in Jesus' name. And we declare your healing, not remission. Because the Bible says there is no remission for sin. There's no remission for sin. Because he's paid for it all. So we say you are healed and you are whole and you will not go back. God is so serious about us not going back. That when Elijah, Elisha, when, El, when Elijah passed 
and Elisha, S-H-A, went with him. He burned up his field. He killed his ox and he destroyed the yokes that went around the ox neck. So even if he wanted to go back to his old way of doing things, his old way of business, he couldn't go back even if he wanted to because God had him destroy everything. So y'all better hear me. Ask God. I know it's hard. Destroy that. There, there are memories that you need to die to. There are memories that you need to let go of. That first love, the one you think you lost. You ain't lost. Please, boo. You ain't lost nobody. God has something greater. That job, that was that man, that was the best job ever. There's a better job. Man, I made a lot of money. There's more money. Hallelujah. I lost that contract. There's another contract. Feel what I'm saying? Come on, beloved. Get on board with me. Let's do this. Let's go in to 2018. We are not going to double back. We're not going to double back. We will not live in the Marbury Bush ministry singing the song all the way long. No, we're not. We are going to go forward in what God has for us. 2018 is going to be bright. It is going to be beautiful. Pray for our government. Pray that God's will be done. Pray that the right strategy be given. Pray that the right people are in the right place to do the right thing for people, not only just for God's people, but for human, excuse me, human beings. Amen. Amen. So I thank you. And I will see you tomorrow. Let's go ahead and decide to come together at eight o'clock instead of 830. Then that way I, I will make sure I am in the house of the Lord on time. Amen. So that's my goal to be on time. <laughs> so, um, we will meet together tomorrow at 8 a.m. Remember, if you're interested in the speaker's training, it is January 26th through the 28th. Everything is inclusive in that package and in that cost. There's going to be a mighty training. Um, if we have five, if we have 25, we're going forward in Jesus' name. The next book, The Mornings After, From Grief to Glory, we are still taking authors for that book. The training uh, for that will be on March the 3rd. I believe that's a Saturday. So please inbox me if you want to be a part of that and share your story in that book. And the second book for the year is uh, from um, Intentional Increase, Maximizing Your Gifts. So if you're a business person, if you are a um, corporate achiever and you've achieved some things in corporate and you want to tell people how you did it and how you've achieved as an entrepreneur, we want you to be a part of that book project, which will come in the summer. But the training you can be a part of in March. And then the men's conference in April, um, the Father Forum Men's Conference, where um, Bishop Marvin L. Sapp will be the keynote speaker. It is an all-male-only male um, teens, millennials, and adult males uh, will converge uh, here in Indianapolis on Saturday, April the 7th. And again, Marvin Sapp will be the keynote speaker. If you have not heard Pastor Sapp preach, whoo, Glory. You, you go, yeah, y'all need, oh, glory. Y'all need to get ready. I'm telling you, go Google his preaching, not his singing. He, I think he about preach equal to where, how he sing, for real. He's sound, it's, it's, it's good. You're going to be blessed, men of God. My goal is for the men's conference to be free. And so I am speak, uh, seeking sponsorship. So a um, couple of you that have showed up on my timeline, I will be reaching out to you here next week um, about sewing in to the conference being free. I, I truly desire for the conference to be free uh, for uh, the men. And last thing, women will be allowed to attend the conference for the last two hours, but we will have a private session at 2, 8, 2 p.m. And then there will be a session where we will all come together for something called the reconciliation ceremony. So just keep your eyes posted to that. Remember, go ahead and mark your calendars, April the 7th. Um, you will hear Pastor Sapp preach, uh, but again, we will have a private session for the women at the men's conference on April 7th. But the majority of that conference, 8 to 4, will be men only. 2 p.m. will be women in a private session, and then about 3 o'clock we will come together uh, for something called a reconciliation ceremony. So God is doing it. And uh, my calendar is open for speaking engagements, uh, whether it's business and training, um, as well as uh, ministry. Amen. 
I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for joining me. Closure. Somebody hashtag. We are closing out 2017 strong. I'm closing. I'm bringing closure to that thing. You know what your thing is. And you're bringing closure to it right now. No more Mulberry Bush ministry. No more doubling back. We're not doing that. We are not being on this cyclical and circular path that is inconvenient, that wastes time, that frustrates us. We will get off the road called lost. We will get off the road called lost that some of us got on because of our own mistakes. And some of us, we were drawn there um, just because of, of, of making a wrong turn. Amen. So I love you. God bless your people in the name of Jesus. Let them go forth in this Saturday with power, with authority, with truth. God, let this word have landed upon good heart, a good heart, God, a plowed heart, a ready heart, that it brings forth fruit. Fruit, 40, 60, and 100 fold, God. Let there be increase in their lives in the name of Jesus. In every area of their lives, let there be increase. We thank you. We have laid it aside. We put it aside. We've thrown it aside. We've cast it aside. Now we put on Jesus. We put on your word. We put on your truth. We take off so that we can take on. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. I'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. Bye.